I know, it's been a little while, but I'm here, I'm doing it. Finally gonna finish the series and show off the final build. If you're new here, which probably are, then welcome. I started building this surly troll back in like July or August, and I finished it a little while ago, but I've been pretty distracted because uh, my partner, Bella, and I are preparing for a cross-country tour across the southern tier of the United States starting in less than two weeks now. Um, so if you want some more in-depth coverage of this build, uh, go ahead and check back on my channel. And if you want to follow our adventures while we're on the road on the tour, uh, consider subscribing. I'll definitely be posting more about that here. Or you can follow us on Instagram at Resilience Revolutions. But yeah, so jumping into it, I'm going to divide this video into seven sections, starting with kind of the identity of the bike. From there, going into the frame, why I chose it, what I like about it, the wheels and brakes, drivetrain, the connection points, meaning where my body's connected to the bike, so the handlebars, uh, the seat, and the pedals, then other add-ons, and then finally bags and accessories. So with that, let's get into it. Okay, so starting off with kind of the identity of the bike, you know, what, what kind of bike is this? So obviously you can tell by the title of this video that it's a touring bike. That's what I built it for, for the upcoming trip. Um, but the thinking goes a little beyond that. So in general, what I was going for is an all purpose bike. So riding on road, gravel, a little bit of mountain, but something that can later evolve into more of a commuter bike or more of a full on hardtail mountain bike or even an e-bike if I wanted to. And so that really brings us into the next section, which is the frame. Looking at the frame, you can tell it kind of has a classic, more relaxed mountain bike geometry. And a big factor that swayed me towards this frame is that you can run rim or disc brakes on it. But what really makes this bike so fit for touring is that it has tons of brazons. If you don't know what brazons are, they're basically any of the little bits on the frame that aren't part of the core structure that have been added on later. So places where you can screw in bolts or where you can run uh, cables and things like that. So yeah, all in all, I bought this frame because it is kind of a do-it-all frame. So moving on to the wheels and brakes then, um, I selected the wheels kind of with the same mindset that I wanted something that was versatile and would be able to evolve as the bike itself evolved. So for me, that meant something that I could run rim brakes on right now, but down the line if I wanted to switch over to disc brakes. And this isn't a super easy thing to find, but fortunately I was able to find someone on eBay who built the wheels themselves and built them with rim brake style rims and disc style hubs. And these are 26 inch rims. And then on those rims, I have a pair of new Marathon Plus Touring tires. They're 26 by two inch. So these tires are nice for you know, cruising, pretty good on the road, but also have some tread for more off-roading type stuff. They also have extra thick walls, which make them more puncture resistant. All right, so then moving on to the rim brakes. Um, if you've watched the series, then you'll already know how much of a pain in the butt these brakes ended up being. I bought uh, Shimano Dior V brakes and they're nice brakes, uh, all metal. The only issue is something with the inside of them, they don't fit quite right on the brake bosses of this bike. I ended up having to grind off some metal to get them to fit properly, which probably wasn't the best course of action, but now that they're on there, they work well and I'm pretty happy with them. As for the brake levers, I just went with some old plastic brake levers that I had on the old bike. All right, so moving on to the drivetrain. Most of these parts came off my old bike I've been using them for a while and have been really enjoying them. I've got three speeds in the front on the crank set and nine speeds in the back. I've got a nice really low gear for going up hills and I've still got a pretty good high gear for going down. If you're into gear ratios at all, which is probably not many of you, uh, the cassette in the back goes 12 to 34 and the chain rings in the front go 22 on the low end to 44 on the high end. Other than that, the crank set is going into a GXP style bottom bracket. All right, so now for the connection points, starting with the seat. 
Uh, again, this is a seat that came off my old bike and I've been using for a while. Figured if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then for the pedals, I've got hybrid style pedals. They're metal on one side, just flat shoes, and on the other side have SPD clips. All right, and then the handlebars. This is probably my favorite and most personalized part of the bike, and also the one that will make the most people cringe, I think. I've got butterfly or trekking style handlebars. I was using those forever on my old bike. Really like those, lots of nice hand positions. I've got the brakes at the wide parts. I find this is kind of my, my go-to position, so that's where I put the brakes. Um, but riding it around a bunch, I was kind of finding that there was a little bit missing for a touring setup. I didn't have a great, more relaxed, low position to go into. So I started to look for other types of handlebars and I was getting ready to drop some money on other handlebars and I decided that these bar ends that are on there, they're only 20 some bucks and I thought they just might do the trick. And I figured it was better to at least try those out before going ahead and dropping a hundred bucks on new handlebars. So I threw them on there and it is wonderful. I know it looks ridiculous, but it's great. If I go all the way back on the handlebars, that's a really nice upright position, not too windy, nice sunny day. I just want to like relax and cruise around or kind of stretch my back out. That one's great. And then, as I said, go into the wide position. That's kind of the go-to, uh, especially when I'm in traffic or need to maneuver well. That nice wide position is good and will also be good for more off-road terrain. And then kind of moving around the handlebars, I have some options on the front. I can go a little bit forward. That's almost like the, the hoods on a drop bar setup. And then finally, I can put my hands all the way out on the bar ends and I can rest my forearms on the rest of the handlebars. And it's like an aero bike and it's wonderful. I can get down in that position and totally rest my arms and be nice and low so that the wind's going over my head. So really happy with that setup. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. Is it unique? Would you ride on it? Or do you think it's totally ridiculous and you'd never use them? Okay, so then lastly for the handlebars, just kind of moving inward towards the steer tube and the stem. Uh, as for the stem, this wasn't too particular of a choice. I had a little bit of a longer stem on there and I was able to pick up a used kind of shorter one from a bike shop just to ex experiment with. And I ended up going with the shorter one. It just felt a little better, especially now that I have that, that reached out arrow position. Uh, and then as for the steer tube, uh, if you watch the previous videos, you'll notice that I didn't post any video of how to cut the steer tube or how to measure the length and cut it. So I will drop a link to a video on how to do that in the description if you're curious. Okay, so moving along to the add-on, starting with the fenders. These are some SKS plastic fenders. These have been great. I was a little worried when I was setting them up that the amount of clearance that the frame has for the wheels would be an issue, since if you mount the fenders directly onto the frame as is, there's just so much space between them and the wheels. Uh, but fortunately, I was able to come up with a pretty easy solution for this. I just went to the hardware store and found a piece of metal that already had a hole in each end and I cut it in half and added two holes. This way I was able to use that to extend the fender mounting closer to the wheel. Um, and I did that in a part and then in other parts I was able to just use these nylon spacers uh, and extra long bolts to move the fender close to the wheel and it worked out great. All right then, so for racks, I picked up some salsa down under racks on eBay. Uh, these have been great so far. And then on the back, I have just an old Planet bike rack that I had on my old bike. Same thing with both of these racks. Nylon spacers came in great handy getting these things mounted just right. Then I've also got three bottle cages on the bike. Um, because of the geometry of the bike, having three doesn't work ideally. Only one of them I'm able to fit a full-size water bottle. The other two have to be more stubby. Finally, for add-ons, I have a kickstand. <gasps> a kickstand. Yes, there are many folks out there who really don't like kickstands. I don't really understand why. Uh, Surly happens to be one of those companies that is not about kickstands. But fortunately, there is an awesome guy on YouTube who designed a way to mount a kickstand to a troll. 
link for that kickstand video down in the description. Finally, bags and all other accessories that I have on the bike. For the main bags that I'm loading everything in, on the back, I've got two Ortlieb Back Roller City. Uh, they're, they're just dry bag panniers, lots of space in there. And then on the front, I have two used Axiom panniers that I, I was able to pick up on eBay. Other than that, on the top of the rear rack, I have kind of a regular roll top dry bag that I'll be strapping on. And then other smaller bags on the bike. Uh, I've got a nice handlebar bag that I picked up used on eBay. And then also on the handlebars, you probably noticed the accessory mount I have on there. It keeps all of my hand positions free, which is really nice. It also importantly lifts the accessories above where the handlebar bag sits, and then it keeps everything mounted straight in front of me. And so on that accessory mount, I have a life proof mount that is a really nice setup to have my phone there. And then in the middle, I have a wireless cycling computer. That way I can get like speed and distance information without having to drain my phone battery all the time. And the last bag that you'll notice on the bike is basically my repair kit. Oh yeah, almost forgot to mention a couple things that aren't on the bike right now. So I've got a bell uh, and then lights. Got this nice headlight, has worked pretty well, USB charging, and then this red tail light. All right, well, there you have it. Thank you for watching the video. Thanks for joining the series. If you appreciate the videos I've been putting out, drop a like, a comment, subscribe, anything like that. It really helps the video get in front of more people and just lets me know that you're enjoying it. If you've got any further questions about the build, about the choices I make, or wanna rip on me for some of the choices I make, leave them down in the comments. I'm happy to discuss. Also, if you're interested in some of the other equipment that we're bringing, like camping gear, uh, stay tuned for that. I'll try to make a video about that while we're on the road. See you out there. Ooh. I heard that kickstands are bad. Kickstands are good. Kickstands are amazing. People who don't like kickstands are just worried about the aesthetic, maybe. They might have other reasons, but I think they're amazing. I can walk around, I can leave my bike. I don't need to hold it or lean it against something stupid.